Hey guys, what's up? It's Danny. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys how I studied for the MCAT while working a full-time job. When it comes to studying for the MCAT or just applying to med school in general, everybody's journey is so different. The first time I took the MCAT, I would admit I barely studied. I studied for like a month and I got a really low score. I got a 490. Since I got such a low score that first time around, I knew that if I wanted to get into med school, I would have to take the test again. However, at the time I just started working full-time as an athletic trainer at a children's hospital so I had to balance working a full-time job and studying for the MCAT and I'll be very honest it was a lot it was doable though and throughout this video I'll be explaining exactly how I studied what I studied and what resources I used as well I took my MCAT June 20th 2024 but I started studying for it sometime around October 2023. When it comes to studying for the MCAT, people usually divide it into a content review phase and then a practice question phase. The way that I divided it is that for the first three to four months, I was mainly doing content review along with some questions, but then the last four months, I was strictly doing questions with minimal content review. I personally chose this split because it had already been a couple of months since I last took any pre-med classes, so all of my biology, gen chem, biochem, all that knowledge was pretty rusty. And I knew that I would have to kind of like know it in a way if I knew I wanted to do well on the MCAT. A lot of resources online will recommend studying from 200 to 300 hours, anywhere from three to six months. But when you work full time, I think it's a little bit harder to kind of dedicate six to eight hours a day studying, which is why I spent a total of eight months studying for the MCAT. So I'm gonna break down what my daily schedule would look like just so you guys could see where I would incorporate studying. I would wake up at 5 a.m. to go for a run or hit the gym. By the time I would get home, shower, eat, and get ready to go to work, it would be around seven. And then I would get to work around 7.30 to eight, depending on the traffic. And my work days would start at 8 a.m and anywhere from 6 to 8 p.m., sometimes even later if I had to cover a game. When I would get home from work, whether it was 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, I would aim to study anywhere from one to three hours with the goal of trying to get to bed at 11 p.m. at latest. Now here's my first piece of advice when it comes to working full-time and studying, and that is any little break that you have, whether it's a lunch break, you know, it's a little bit slower than usual at work and you're allowed to, use that time to study anything you possibly can. I would have a really nice lunch break that sometimes went over an hour and I would use that break not only to eat, but to also study, I would do Anki, practice questions, cars passages, just any type of studying. So this is kind of what my daily schedule looked like during the week. During the weekends, I would aim to study anywhere from six to eight hours on Saturday and on Sunday as well. Obviously, I know that everything can be really draining. So when it came to resting from studying, for me, it kind of varied. Sometimes I rested during the week. Sometimes I wouldn't study on Sundays. It just really depended. But what I ultimately figured out is that it was better to rest if I was feeling super overwhelmed or tired from work than like powering through it because I wouldn't study as effectively and efficiently. So now that you guys kind of have a very general schedule, let me explain to you guys how I studied and what I used to study. Initially, through my post -back program, we got the Kaplan package. So we had access to the online Kaplan portal as well as the physical books. When I first started studying and doing content review, I really did try to like read the books, read the chapters, highlight, annotate, but I realized it would just take way too long and the information in the books was like really, really specific. And the MCAT, in my opinion, it's not about knowing like every single detail of all your pre-med classes. It's more about knowing a little bit of everything. What I did is that I went online and on Reddit, I found a 90, I think it's a 90 page review sheet that kind of has the Kaplan chapters summarized and like each chapter has its own page containing a summary of the chapter for each subject. I'll make sure to leave that link to that Reddit post down below so you guys can check it out and download it. For content review, what I found to be really efficient is going over that sheet. So I would go over a chapter from a subject 
kind of read it, annotate through it, just like a little bit really quick. And if there was something that I didn't know, I would watch a YouTube video about it. Once I finished reviewing the chapter, which should take me anywhere from 30 minutes up to two hours, if it was something like really complex, like the cell cycle, I would then do Anki to test my knowledge of that chapter. If you guys have never heard of Anki, it is a great flashcard system. I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but there's tons of videos out there online that teach you how to use Anki properly. There's also a bunch of different pre-made MCAT Anki decks. The one that I specifically used is called the Miles Down Anki deck. The reason that I like that deck is because it was exactly organized just like how the review sheet was organized through the Kaplan chapters. The way that I would go about the deck is that when I first downloaded it, I suspended all the cards and then as I would go through each chapter, I would unsuspend the cards and then test myself depending on what I learned from the review sheet. And on top of that, since I still had access to my Kaplan portal, once I finished reviewing the Anki deck for the chapter that I went over, I would go to the Kaplan portal and do questions for each chapter. Specifically the end of chapter questions, which from what I remember, it was anywhere from seven to 15 questions, depending on the chapter. So to summarize the system that I had, first, I would go over a specific chapter from the review sheet, annotate it, watch videos. Then I would unsuspend a specific Anki deck from the Miles Down deck. And then once I did Anki, I would do the Kaplan end of chapter questions. Now for the psych social portion of the MCAT, I studied using a different review sheet that I'll leave the link to down below in my description. But same thing, I would read and annotate the review sheet, watch YouTube, and then I would do Anki. But for psych social, I didn't do Kaplan questions. I thought it was kind of redundant and I thought Anki did a much better job of memorizing the information. And then for cars, just depending on how busy my day was, I would do anywhere from two to five practice passages through Jack Weston. If you've never heard of Jack Weston, it's just an other online MCAT website. I'll make sure to leave the link to their website down below my description, just like every resource that I've been talking about. I know this is a lot and you might be asking, Danny, how did you break it down? Did you first go over all 12 Gen Chem chapters and go over to Biochem? Let me kind of give you guys a sample of what my week looked like. So Monday, I would review Gen Chem and Orgo. Tuesday, I would do biology. Wednesday, I would go over biochem. Thursday, physics and math. Friday, I would do behavioral science. Ideally, I would aim to do a chapter per subject per week. Sometimes I did two if I really knew the information well beforehand. The only time I didn't do that was for the psych social or behavioral science portion. I would do anywhere from six to 12 pages from the review sheet every time that I went over it. Now that was during the week. On the weekends, I did things a little bit differently. Yes, I still went over content. I caught up with my schedule and if I missed a chapter during the week, I would do it on the weekend. If I missed my Anki cards, I would catch up with them on the weekend too. But during the weekends, I would also prioritize doing practice questions. Like most people studying for the MCAT, I did my practice questions through UWorld. UWorld is an amazing question bank for the MCAT. Again, link is gonna be down below in my description. I no longer have access to my UWorld and I'm not gonna pay for it just for this video. But through UWorld, you can customize your test. You can pretty much expand all topics of the MCAT and check mark the type of questions that you wanna be asked for your practice tests or your practice questions, if you wanna put it that way. I would aim to do a 30 question practice test, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. And all the questions that I told UWorld to ask me were all about things that I went over like the week prior. That way during the week I was doing my content review and like learning the information as well as doing Anki and the Kaplan questions to make sure that I knew like what I was learning but then doing the UWorld questions, which really do mimic the MCAT in my opinion, and like just solidifying the information. Once I went over all the review sheets and did all the Kaplan questions and pretty much unsuspended most of the cards, I knew that it was time just to focus on practice questions. When it came to doing practice questions, my strategy was pretty straightforward. I did anywhere from 20 to 30 UWorld questions a day. And that may not seem like a lot, but trust me, when you're working full time and you don't really have that much time to study, you really wanna be realistic with your numbers. So I knew that by doing 20 to 30 questions, it'd be enough questions to like actually practice like my questions, but it would also give me enough time 
to review my questions and study from like my mistakes. I always put a timer on UWorld. On UWorld, you can select if you want to take a practice test or do questions timed or untimed. The reason I always did them timed is because at the end of the day, the MCAT is a timed exam. So I felt like adding that pressure of time just like, I don't know, it made me feel more prepared, I guess. The goal was to finish UWorld, which I eventually did, but I'll be very honest, they give you like a correct percentage, like number, like percentage of questions you get correct. And mine wasn't really high. I think it was like 48 or 47%. Eventually when I ran out of UWorld questions, I started doing the ones from the AAMC, which I think were like the most similar to the ones on the actual exam. So during the week, that's kind of what I did. Just answer UWorld questions, the AAMC ones, and even during work, like I was mentioning earlier, if I had like a good break, I would just do 10 UWorld world questions. It was still something. On the weekends, I would do something called mini MCATs through UWorld. world The MCAT is four sections. So on UWorld, world I would do 25 questions and like make it in a way that the 25 questions were for like a specific section, if that makes sense. So in total, I would be doing 25, what's 25 times 400. So I would be doing 100 UWorld world questions. And like I said, the main thing when it comes to questions is reviewing it. I cannot emphasize that enough. So I would go over every single question, even if I got it right. And I will just like write down why I got it right. Now practice test. I did my first practice test about four months out from my actual exam. And it was an AAMC one. After I did that AAMC practice test, I started doing the blueprint practice test. I decided to do the blueprint ones just because online, that's kind of what people recommended. I just picked it, all right? There's a lot of different ones that you can do. I liked the blueprint ones personally. And once I was getting closer to my actual MCAT, I switched over to the AAMC ones, which are the most representative ones. The way that I spaced out my practice test is that I did that first baseline one four months out before my actual MCAT. And then after that one, every two to three weeks, I did one. Online, some people tell you to take a practice test like every weekend, like one month out before the MCAT. Personally, I don't think that's that efficient just because when you're working full time and you're not really studying aggressively like per day, I don't think one week is enough to really boost your score and give you that confidence to do another practice test. I took my practice test during the weekend because that's the only time that I really had to sit down and like take it. So Saturdays, I would do my practice test. Sunday, fully review the practice test. And then that Monday, Tuesday, I took a break from studying because guys, practice tests are super draining. In total, I did nine practice tests before taking my actual exam. I did four blueprint ones and then five AAMC ones, including my baseline one. During my practice question phase, what I did with Anki is that I made a separate deck of Anki cards and that deck was for topics that I was getting wrong consistently or things that I had never seen before. And I prioritized that deck over the Miles Down deck. But overall, I'll be honest, I didn't prioritize Anki that much when it came to practice questions just because I really wanted to like focus on doing questions and not spend too much time on Anki. With cars, I would still do my two to five Jack Weston passes. And sometimes if I had a lot of time that day, I would like do extra cars questions from UWorld, world, which were really good. Now the last practice test, I took two weeks before my actual MCAT. And then the week before my MCAT, I honestly didn't study much. I had like gone through so much with work and studying. I just wanted to give myself a nice little break to calm the nerves before taking the actual exam. Something to keep in mind because I ran into this a lot. I would try my best to keep up with studying. I really did try to do a chapter a day, keep up with questions, keep up with Anki. But let's be real. If I worked till really late, I barely studied. Sometimes I missed a day or two of studying. And at first I would get really, really frustrated. I'd be really mad at myself. I'd be like, oh, it's not fair that some people are not working and they only have time to study. But guys, trust me, that is not the mentality that you want to have. If you miss a day or two, that is completely fine. Don't beat yourself up on it. Just bounce back harder next time you study. Use the weekends to your advantage and really optimize them. I know it can be hard. You're going to make a lot of sacrifices. You might not be able to go out as much or see your friends, but trust me, it will be totally worth it. With that being said though, do make time to have fun, make time to go out, make time to see your friends. What I would do if I knew I was gonna go out with friends or my friends were doing something that I just couldn't miss 
is I would wake up really early, study early in the morning all the way to midday, take a power nap, and then do stuff with my friends because that gave me the best of both worlds. I was able to study efficiently and able to have fun with my friends. Keep in mind, when you study for these short periods, no distractions, no phone around you, nothing. Just you, your brain, your hands, and whatever resource you're using to study for the MCAT. I know this video was super long, but hopefully it gave you an insight on how I studied for the MCAT while working full time, and hopefully it gives you ideas on how you can study while working full time too. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. But that is it for me, but always, always, always remember to stay hydrated.